It's when you're working towards something that you stumble on something else. Utilize that time to do something risky and big. Antonio Brown is teaching us that it's never too late for forgiveness in our own eyes. Okay. And that's going to take him somewhere. I don't know where it's at yet, but it's going to take him somewhere. Make sure that at the beginning and the end of your transition, somebody likes you. Okay. Some quick church announcements. One new setup, same hat because some things you just don't change and I'm still not doing my hair. Second thing, this video is a little bit special to me. Um, because you're watching it, which tells me a lot about you at this given point in time. We are about <clears throat> one day removed from Valentine's Day. And if you're watching this video, it's because you're an overachiever and you've already bought gifts for your significant other, or you're single, or you have too much time on your hands, which is probably a combination of the last two. Then again, I am making this video. So we're rolling in the same boat. But luckily, this video is for you or anybody who's about to get dumped after Valentine's Day. So with that being said, I'm Dominique. Welcome into your way off. What's supposed to be Wednesday has now turned into way off weekend. Uh, what's my tagline y'all? Welcome into your way off weekend, your weekly dose of everything sport, a little society and a crap ton of foolishness for the sports novice and the sports junkie alike. Okay. We are talking. Andre Drummond, not really, he's just kind of the basis of this video, but it's essentially a video talking about how to turn all of your L's into dubs, courtesy of Andre Drummond's trade. Now, to give a little bit of backstory here as to where this came from, if you don't know, Andre Drummond was recently traded by the Detroit Pistons. He is now a Cleveland Cavalier. This really caught my attention more so based on his response than what really happened. And what I mean by that is anytime you run into a situation where you felt secure, where you felt that there was a lot of loyalty involved, you tend to get a little bit comfortable. So when they pull the rug from under you, like they did to Andre Drummond, feelings, especially in this age of social media, become um, things that we just like watching because they're very entertaining. Now, Andre Drummond was arguably the most notable Detroit Piston. You could argue Blake Griffin, but that's not what this video is about. But he was arguably the most notable Detroit Piston for roughly about seven and a half seasons, if you want to be exact. He has had a lot to say in a few words. Um, his most recent social media posts consist of Trust no one, son, or something to that effect that I'll put somewhere around here. This got me to thinking about a lot of changes and transitions um, that have happened in different sports leagues this year, notably that of Antonio Brown, which is somebody who I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. You can find those videos linked below. Now his wasn't as drastic of a change um, or as drastic of a reaction as Antonio Brown had with three different teams and the commotion that he's caused, which is a different video for a different day because now he's apologetic for the seventh time. Um, but it got me to thinking a lot about transitions in life, which is where this comes in for all you single people or recently dumped or those who are getting ready to go through a big transition season. I want you guys to focus on two things, transition and reputation. Now, before we get into those, I briefly want to touch on loyalty and this is going to affect transition and reputation because it's going to cause you to change your perspective. Now, loyalty is defined as a, or it's defined as faithfulness to commitments or obligations. That is a very fluid definition to me. Now, some people might say that loyalty takes on a ride or die mentality. Loyalty is essentially security. Now, why I say it's fluid, you're stupid for thinking that loyalty is solid. Commitments to faithfulness to commitments or obligations. That is ever changing. The only thing consistent is change by nature, honestly, but Loyalty again has taken on this stupid ride or die mentality when I viewed this trade and loyalty in this 
situation. Something that Andre Drummond was very frustrated with because he felt like there was no loyalty in the situation as something to the effect of the Detroit Pistons are actually looking out for Andre Drummond's best interest. And I'm gonna say that because that's usually how these situations work. If you have the opportunity to take advantage of something, take advantage of it. I want you to think about this. When a parent disciplines their child, it is with the intent of making them understand that what they're doing is not acceptable within their home, within society, something along that line. They want them to be better, right? Now, the child doesn't understand that at the time, but as they get older, as they transition, they appreciate it. That's how I looked at this trade. If we can be quite honest, we haven't talked about Detroit in a while. That might just be me, but there's nothing striking about Detroit at this given point in time. And along with not talking about a team is not talking about their notable athlete. And that falls onto Andre Drummond. If you can be honest with yourself, when is the last time, if you're kind of teetering on watching sports, when's the last time you thought about Andre Drummond? If you were a sports junkie, was he in your top five of people to think about every day of games you wanted to watch, of things you wanted to do? If, the, if he was, then great. But for most of us, that's not the case. So the Andre Drummond situation, the Detroit Pistons trading him has intentionally or unintentionally made us talk about him. Um, that benefits him in the process because we're talking about him and not the Detroit Pistons. That's kind of a win-win in his situation, regardless of how he's fresh, uh, regardless of being frustrated, you kind of have to look at that as a solid win. Another example of that is Boogie Cousins. Boogie Cousins was the most notable Sacramento King because who in the heck thinks about Sacramento? Seriously. But um, with the media's perception of him being quite attitudinal um, and the trade between, I believe, him and between the Sacramento Kings and the New Orleans Pelicans, we were focusing dead on Boogie. This led to some media controversy. I remember seeing plenty of uh, interviews about how he felt like the... Um, the organization wasn't trustworthy, they weren't loyal, same kind of situation that everybody kind of goes through when they're just essentially uprooted from their lives and moved somewhere else. But it made us look at Boogie in a different way, mainly because that's when interviewers started heading over to, you know, front office staff and, you know, those little insider reports. And we found out that Boogie had a different side to him if you didn't follow him that closely. We found out that he was great in the community. We found out that he cared about kids. And that essentially became what moved over. Yeah, he has a big attitude, but he also has a big heart. Then you take him to New Orleans and he has big moves. The boy balled out, right? Great fit with Anthony Davis at the time. Essentially, that ended up leading us to believe that, yo, Boogie might not be all bad. And I'm gonna touch on this a little bit later. But first, change your perspective about loyalty, okay? Loyalty, when somebody is disloyal, that's the word. I'm sure somebody will correct me. If somebody is disloyal, if somebody is in the way of letting you go, letting you be, let it happen. Let it be is my tagline, y'all. Let it be, change your perspective, because every disadvantage that somebody who's in a powerful position thinks they're putting you in is actually your advantage if you allow it to be. Which leads me to my key point of transitioning. Capitalize, capitalize, capitalize on this transition. If you know me, I'm young, which means that, am I young? I'm a young adult, which means that most of my 20s are big transition periods, okay? I am in a huge transition period because I have goals of getting a house, of doing new things, kind of shifting around. Like I really want a Range Rover, but who has $90,000 to spare me? Nobody. That um, leads me to believe that this is my opportunity, this is my time while I'm still young, while I still have some energy to capitalize on the things that I can do. After you've changed your perspective on things, start working towards something. The worst thing that you can do in transition seasons is to sit still. 
there are times to be reflected, but being reflected without a plan, I think is asinine. Okay. When you first hit this heavy transition period, before you hit this heavy transition period, have a plan of where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. Make sure you have a bigger goal attached, even if that goal changes. I don't know if you guys know about quarter life crises, but social media has really inflated those, okay? Because we see people doing better than us and we want to be where they are. We want their goals. And if you're not focused, you want what somebody else has that wasn't meant for you, your personality or your passion or your purpose for that matter. So have a bigger goal. It's okay to change that, but having something to work towards is, is where you need to be. In this transition of capitalizing on things, if you're not using your situation to work on where you need to be and you find yourself out of that circumstance, that situation or that scenario, write something down. Allow yourself to um, work towards something, to, to work towards something greater because it's when you're working towards something that you stumble on something else. Does that make sense? Um, so for all of my people out there, please, for the love of God, pull a Richard Sherman. This is where I'm gonna bring this up. Richard Sherman did something big and risky in his season of transition. Seattle essentially gave up on him, but he, regardless of what he really believed in his head, he could have believed he was washed up, but who wants to believe that because that's too easy. He decided to bet his entire salary on his performance and on his play. Not only did that require that he work harder and make more of an effort, but it kept our eyes on him. I've learned that in your transition season, you realize that more eyes are on you, rather they be haters eyes or supporters eyes, more eyes are always going to be on you. So utilize that time to do something risky and big. I've heard people say, no, you shouldn't speak your goals out loud, but I think this is one of those times where you should speak your goals out loud. Shameless plug, side note, one of my goals this year is to hit 10,000 subscribers. So before you do anything, go ahead, stop what you're doing, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because I have a lot of way off content coming for you. It's not just way off talking about sports, it's way off talking about life. And another goal of mine is learning to cook. So I'm going to be way off in the kitchen because I really can't cook. And uh, if you wanna see more of that content, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter, find me at Sna on Snapchat. I have all of those links down below. Um, and you can watch Dom's Ratchet Kitchen there and watch me as I pursue all of these journeys to learn how to do something. But back to my topic. With Richard Sherman taking a bet on himself, it left all eyes on Richard Sherman. Smartest thing he could have done because whether or not he failed or whether or not he succeeded, he was still pulling in diverse audiences that were gonna support him either way. So remember, in your big transition, Make sure you have and you set intentional plans, whether that be leaving your company or leaving your relationship and knowing that you're gonna do better or knowing what you're not gonna do, make sure people know what they're going to miss out on so that we can always be talking about you and not about them. That's kind of the name of the game, isn't it? Next and final point, Let's focus on reputation because transition and reputation go hand in hand. And this is actually more of a lighthearted point, but I do want to get it out there. While you transition, where you're at, let me tell you what, you're going to have some ups and downs. You will have some ups and downs in relationships and in interpersonal relationships and business relationships and all of those to where, to the point um, where people who might have once believed in you, those first impressions, they kind of get tarnished and you're left with a damaged perspective of yourself and you were left with a damaged perspective of what you set out to do. Regardless of how you feel during those situations, um, you're gonna need a cheerleader. And sometimes a cheerleader isn't a person, um, sometimes it is. Sometimes a cheerleader is just like a quote, that you left up on your wall or something you said that you were going to set out to do. Um, but either way, make sure that at the beginning and the end of your transition, somebody likes you, okay? Um, film a video of yourself talking about something. Um, make a giant statement um, like Andre Drummond. Well, no, not like Andre German. You need to trust somebody. Life doesn't quite work out like that. Um, make a big statement like Richard Sherman, who said what he was going to do. Um, 
but have somebody or something that reminds you that you're really not half bad because we all think we kind of suck. This is going to help you heavily and it's going to help, help you heavily at the end of your journey. Um, if at least one person likes you in the midst of everybody talking bad about you, because you know, that's kind of like a rolling train. If all we're fed are the negative things and we're going to believe the negative things, but if there's one person, rather that be your mama, your ex's mama, one of your managers, one of your coworkers, somebody in the room who likes you or a statement that you wrote about yourself, reminding yourself of all of your great qualities, which can also help you move forward in your purpose. Um, have something down or have someone down who likes you so that when you move on to this next transition, um, or when you succeed in what you set out to do originally and you really put it in everybody's face, you can start that train of rolling. Make sense? What I mean by start that train of rolling is give all the naysayers and the doubters the, I knew he was always going to make it. Cause you know, that's one of the best feelings in the world. Or you telling yourself that I knew I was always going to make it. Take uh, the tweets that everybody likes to pull out when somebody accomplishes something. Demi Lovato saying that one day she was going to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl or whatever. They always give you the stories of the naysayers who kind of thought they were crazy. Else, You're inspiring people in the process and getting on your haters nerves. Okay. Create uh, something or have someone who always believes in you, who kind of knows your story. Um, they don't need to know the inner workings of your story, but have somebody who likes you. Okay. It makes this process a lot easier. And they start the money train of saying, Hey, um, Boogie Cousins was great in the community. He was great with kids. We're really going to miss Boogie so that that reputation takes on whatever else you were doing. So not only is Boogie an amazing basketball player who gets to get injured and sit on the bench and make millions of dollars because we're really the dumb ones who didn't pursue basketball careers or athletic careers or any kind of other careers. I should have been an engineer. Um, but that reputation follows you as well. And that's also going to lead me to the point of please leave somewhere with class. Even if you didn't do it right while you were there, utilize this transition and that big statement or big action or whatever you need to do to be respectful. Now athletes, they don't always have to do that. In, in Antonio Brown's case, he should have done that because then all the bad stuff starts to come out. But in a lot of athletes case, they don't have to do that because they make more money than we do. Um, and some of them know how to invest and uh, will continue to make more money than we do. But uh, for the most part, we're not there. Um, so before you scroll through your ex's long text and uh, hit that OK button, make sure they at least have respect for you so that when the time comes, they can't say anything bad about you. You never know who is going to uh, be that bridge for your next opportunity. I say all of this to say on this pre Valentine's Day. There's hope for you. Um, this might be a little bit of a different Valentine's Day video. This might be a little bit of a different life video. And actually it's a typical life video. Um, but really, uh, utilize these lessons that these players are teaching us. Antonio Brown is teaching us that it's never too late for forgiveness in our own eyes. Okay. And that's going to take him somewhere. I don't know where it's at yet, but it's going to take him somewhere. Um, for Boogie Cousins, it's that you are never in your prime in one place. You can be in your prime a bunch of different times. That's very contradictory, but it's possible. I don't know. You can be in your prime a couple of times. I mean, look at, uh, Will Smith and his prime in the nineties back in his prime in the 2020s. Hi, Will Smith. Love your videos. Um, but keep moving, keep pushing, have something to work towards. That's the goal of all of this. Life is going to kick you in the butt. Loyalty is always going to kick you in the butt because again, loyalty requires being committed to essentially having somebody else's best interest at heart. Those things change. You can't like dog. If he has a family, then you know, his best friend ain't going to be his priority. Get what I'm going with that. Um, but make sure that you put things into perspective and that you have something to do. Just have something to do and it lets you stumble on everything else. And before I leave this way off commentary of the week, I have one other point to leave you with in case you didn't understand a word I was saying anywhere. Let's see if I can get this right. Cause I got it wrong a bunch of other times before. Mm. Spoiled. I consider, I consider it spoiled. Fermented fruit, 
turns into wine and moldy bread turns into penicillin. Terrible situations at first for somebody turned into situations where somebody or something stumbled upon them and now they're worth more and are helping other people make more and see more value in them. Change your perspective. Everything that's spoiled turns into something great. Another man's trash is another one's treasure. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm Dominique. I'm way off and I'm way out. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Valentine's Day weekend. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.